Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. In this video, how to spot when to buy or sell shares using something called the Relative Strength Indicator. So it's a tricky point. As a long-term investor, you are going to need to go into the market or sometimes be buying, sometimes be selling. You hear people say things like buy on the dips. You hear people say things like buy into strength. So how do you know when you're buying or selling at a choice moment. This is not a video about timing the market. We're not market timers as such, but it is about identifying better than average entry points and better than average exit points. So although what I'm about to describe is often used by short-term traders for the long-term investor, it's also pretty useful too. Now, Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, amongst others, was one of the people who used the phrase irrational exuberance early on to describe stock markets back in the mid-1990s. Title of a famous book by Yale professor Robert Schiller as well. So why that expression in this particular video? Well, it's useful because it's a neat way to summarize irrational exuberance, the fact that as momentum builds behind a stock, basically it tends to overcook on the upside, and then as momentum goes the other way and people sell a stock, it often tends to dip too far on the downside. So markets are often overreacting to both good news and bad news. And if you know that, and if you've got some way of sort of measuring that, well, maybe you can take advantage of it in terms of timing the points where you get into the market and the points where you need to pull some money out, raise some capital and come out again. So that's where I'm headed. And it's all to do with you know, the madness of crowds. All I'm saying here is that as a few people get behind a stock, the price starts to rise, more people join the bandwagon. And before you know it, the price is heading for the sky. And the point being that, you know, if there is strong price momentum behind a stock and it's been there for some time, maybe that's not the time to be buying. And equally, if there's strong momentum on the downside and it's been going for some time, is there a way? And the, the RSI or relative strength indicator might be that way of identifying when actually now would be a good time to have a bit of courage and to get in. And don't forget, we are trying to do the opposite of most people. We're trying to buy when others are fearful and sell when others are being irrationally exuberant. So that's the idea. Now, why is all this useful? Well, basically, if you could identify when stocks have been, to use the jargon, overbought, the market jargon, then you might look at holding or trimming part of your portfolio. That could be potentially a good opportunity to do that. If you can see that the stocks have been oversold, if there's some sort of indicator that seems to be suggesting that, then maybe that's where you think, actually, I wouldn't mind adding to my position, and now's quite a good time to do it. Or maybe now's quite a good time to actually get into this stock for the first time and add it to my portfolio. So let's take a look at that in a bit more detail, the RSI, Relative Strength Indicator. Now, there are some numbers coming up, but I'm gonna simplify them because most people watching this video do not want to know too much about the maths. They'll assume that if they see the number, it's been done correctly, but a little insight does help. So here it comes, how it works. It gives you basically a number between zero and 100. So, so far, so good. How's the number calculated? <clears throat> it compares recent gains to losses over a number of previous trading sessions and relative strength, it's the RS, the indicator is the number that comes out, is the average gain divided by the average loss simplifying the approach very slightly here, that triggers a fairly grim looking formula. And this is where some people might turn off, but don't, because actually I'm gonna cut through this fairly quickly to the end result. So let's take a look at how I might apply this formula <clears throat> to come up with my number between one and 100, and then how would I interpret the result? So here it is, a simplified example. And for purists, this is a little bit simplified, but who cares for the purposes of a basic education video? Over a given period, the FTSE 100 gains an average of 50 points in a winning session. There's a few assumptions I'm making here. And loses around 20 points. So the FTSE's at, you know, 6,000 points for argument's sake. So it gains 50 on average, loses 20 in a losing session. So on an up tick, it goes up around 50. On a down tick, it goes down 20. Okay, plugging that information into that formula, and I'll leave you know, testing the formula only to people who want to, but 100 minus 100 over one plus the gains on average divided by the losses on average gives you, for those people thinking, where's he going with this, a number, and it's the number most people want, of 71. And as it happens, that's a relatively high RSI. I said the range was naught 
to 100. So 71 looks to be taking you towards the upper reaches. So what? Now the answer could be anywhere between 0 and 100. And if you look at an RSI and assume it's been calculated correctly, what are you supposed to do with it? What is 71? Well, here's the key. All right, in its simplest, now the RSI is used in many, many, many different ways by traders, but for an investor looking for a decent entry or exit point, here's one simple way to use it. Let's put a couple of bands in. So 30 is generally considered on the low side for the relative strength indicator. 70 is considered to be on the high side. So high is sort of up in this zone, low is down in this zone, and then you've got a sort of ambiguous patch somewhere in the middle. So what? Let's say the RSI looks like that. So you're plotting the RSI over time, all right? So there's time, and there's the level of the RSI. What would you interpret as it begins to move around, and how would you react as an investor? Well, in essence, when the RSI cuts up through 30, comes off its low, if you like, that's seen as bullish. Equally, when it cuts down through 70, that's seen as bearish. All right, if the RSI is heading south, stocks are basically losing momentum, if you want to see it that way. Equally, when, they, when the RSI ticks up, relative strength, that's relative bullishness, looking at average gains over average losses. And you go a little bit further, you can say, well, up here, above 70, the market or the stock looks expensive. That's where you're going with this. So maybe this is not a great time to buy. If anything, it's a good time to sell. And down there, below 30, the market's looking oversold. People have got carried away. People have driven the stock down too far. That's driven the RSI down. So maybe you've got a half decent entry point or a point to buy. And that's the point. Below 30, this can give you an indicator that maybe this is a good time to get in. Once you're heading through and above 70, people sometimes look at it and say, Whoa, that is irrational exuberance kicking in. Maybe this is not the time to buy. In fact, maybe this is the time to trim my holding. So there's a really basic interpretation. And you can back up that initial reading of the RSI with volume data. So see whether volumes, this is the number of shares traded, and that information can be uh, made available to you. See if the number of shares traded is increasing sharply or decreasing sharply, and that can give you extra meat to your argument about what's happening to the underlying stock and whether now is a good time to buy or trim or sell. It's not perfect. A few pointers. First of all, the calculation. You need to get under the bonnet if you're going to use this thing regularly. Basically, the fewer trading periods that are used to calculate the RSI, to generate the 50s and the 20s, if you like, in my formula, the more it's likely to read overbought and oversold. In other words, use fewer trading periods to look back and get a feeling for the RSI, it will be more volatile. You have to be careful, because if it's volatile, you'll be in and out of stocks the whole time, and any gains you make from timing stuff right short term will be eaten up by charges. So you've got to be a little bit careful. You need to understand how it's done. It works best in a sideways trend, which is actually where we are kind of at the time this video is being shot, uh, tail end of 2015, rather than when you're in a clear bull market or a clear bear market. So it's quite good for timing entry points, buying on the dips and so on. It can be useful there. And at the end of the day, it tends to be used heavily by short-term traders, uh, less so by long-term traders and investors, but entry points and exit points are important to both, I'd suggest. A lot of ground covered there. Any questions to the usual place.